The man accused of killing four members of the same family in London, Ontario last week is now facing charges of terrorism. 20-year-old Nathaniel Veltman made a court appearance this morning. Police say he intentionally drove his truck into the family while they were out for a walk because they were Muslim. He is also facing four counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. A nine-year-old boy is the only family member to survive that attack. He is still in hospital but is expected to recover. For reaction, we have reached Jessica Davis in Ottawa. She's the president at Insight Threat Intelligence, a security consulting company. She's also a former CSIS senior strategic analyst. Jessica, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you for having me, Natasha. Jessica, we know over the past week a lot of people right across the country from all different political backgrounds were saying terrorism charges must be laid. But I wonder from your perspective looking at this, did you anticipate this was coming? At first, it was a bit difficult to say that terrorism charges should be laid because we had so little information about the motivation of the individual involved. So the, from the get-go, the police were just saying things like it was an anti-Muslim attack, which in and of itself may not have been enough to rise to the level of terrorism. But very quickly thereafter, the prime minister came out and called it an act of terrorism. The public safety minister did the same thing. So I suspected that there was a little bit more to the motivation than just... Um, what the police were saying. So from that perspective, I wasn't surprised. At this stage for the public, we still know very little. Last Monday, mm -hmm. the press conference was held where the police made it clear that they believe this was motivated by the fact that this person had some sort of anti-Muslim ideology, but they weren't even quite clear and they didn't necessarily say ideology. So I wonder, what do you think... Um, what do you think they found or what would they have found in order to be able to move forward with the terrorism charges? So I suspect that there's something that they have in their possession that outlines a little bit more than just an anti-Muslim sentiment. Or it could be something um, like a statement to police, social media posts, statements to friends or family members, could be um, a manifesto, although that's a bit more rare. Um, ideally, they would have more than one piece of evidence that points to ideology or motive so that they can triangulate the evidence. And if one of those pieces of evidence were to be discredited or discounted in, in the subsequent trial, that they would have something else to fall back on. So right now, we have very little information about what motivated this individual right now. I would say it's probably something along ideological or political motivations if we're going to talk in terms of the criminal code definition of terrorism. But beyond that, we have nothing to elaborate what was actually motivating this individual. Has this ever happened before where, I mean, I, I have no sense of how common this is for an act of violence like this to take place in Canada um, and then for us to see terrorism related charges, specifically with uh, communities of color or minority communities within Canada? So terrorism charges in this country are actually quite rare, sort of across the spectrum. I would say there's been about, you know, roughly 60 charges and convictions for terrorism offenses. So over the course of the last 20 years, since the Anti-Terrorism Act has been enacted, that's not very many. Um, it is increased, it, it is very rare in terms of anybody who's motivated by ideology that's something other than for Al-Qaeda or uh, the Islamic State. So we have started to see a move from Public Safety Canada, from CSIS, to indicate that they're investigating and are concerned with other forms of politically or ideologically or religiously motivated violence. So we can think about it in terms of white supremacy, neo-Nazi movements, and even in some cases, things like uh, incel motivated violence. There has been one other similar charge in, in terms of uh, an incel motivated attack. I wouldn't necessarily put them on the same spectrum, they're very different ideologies in terms of what we know so far about the London attack. But those are the this this incident and the, the Toronto spa attack with the incel charge are the two that I can point to that are different than what we've seen historically in terms of terrorism charges in Canada. There's been a lot of talk in the past week in light of what's taken place in London about addressing whether in fact this was white supremacism. So let's take this particular person out of the case. From your perspective, looking at the national security issues in Canada, is there a rise in white supremacy in this country? What is fostering it? Where is it spreading? I would say that white supremacy and anti-Muslim sentiment and 
really a lot of anti immigrant or anti minority sentiment is on the rise in Canada. It is a bit difficult to quantify in terms of data, but we have seen, it's difficult to say it, but like maybe a bit more organization in terms of the hate that's being projected against some of these communities. So a little bit more sharing of information online, a little bit more uh, coordination of hateful incidents. And I think that Public Safety Canada and the police are right to start thinking about this in terms of terrorism. Thinking about it this way unlocks a number of counterterrorism tools that we have at our disposal. So we've seen things like the listing of particular groups as an important piece of our counterterrorism puzzle. And there are other investigative tools as well. So there is a concerning rise. I'm glad to see that the police and Public Safety Canada are starting to really take that seriously. But I think that we have a long way to go. A long way to go in, in what way? In terms of making sure that our counterterrorism laws and our laws in general are keeping all Canadians safe um, to, a, to the same extent. I think right now, or historically, we've really prioritized um, targeting groups that were um, perhaps maybe more against white Canadians or um, Canadians writ large. And now we really need to refocus some of those efforts to make sure that every Canadian, regardless of religion, ethnicity, ideology, political ideas are protected with those counterterrorism tools. Now, returning back to the specific case of Veltman, his next court appearance is going to be on June 21st. And from your perspective, in terms of security, in terms of the evidence that might be presented, what are you going to be looking for? Well, these things happen very slowly in Canada. So I'm not expecting to get a lot of information from the get-go here. Uh, I'm definitely going to be looking for that piece on ideology and intent. So ideally understanding a little bit more about what that ideology or political motivation was, because right now the extremism spectrum in, in Canada and around the world, there's a lot of mixed ideas, anti-government sentiment, white supremacy, neo-Nazism. So I'd like to know a little bit about what specifically his ideology or political motivation is. I'm not sure we're going to get very many details right away. It may be more of a something that trickles out over the course of the investigation or more likely through the course of the trial that will eventually happen. How much do you think political pressure and the political conversation around this might influence the investigation? Hopefully not at all. I'm, you know, there, there should be a fair bit of separation. I think that the way that the political conversation has influenced to date is by reassigning some of those priorities, making sure that public safety is emphasizing the different types of political violence or politically motivated violence in Canada. So I think that that's where the appropriate level of political influence is happening. Um, it was a bit concerning to see the prime minister call this an act of terrorism before terrorism charges were laid. Hopefully he was briefed on some of the details of the investigation, maybe more than we have right now, to be able to make that conversation make that determination of that statement, um, because we do want to maintain that separation of politics and investigations. Okay. As the story progresses, I hope we can speak again. Jessica, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Jessica Davis is a former CSIS senior strategic analyst, and she joined us from Ottawa.